When we think of forests, we usually imagine pine trees. Throughout the world, pines are symbols of fertility and renewal because their beauty isn't seasonal. Their wood, needles, cones, and nuts are vital to both ecosystems and economies in the Northern Hemisphere. But Europe's legendary pine forests are under siege. An enemy is marching ruthlessly forward, determined to destroy every tree in its path. Mountains are the ideal environment for the pine processionary. When there are climatic changes, the processionary adapts its altitude in order to find its favored ecosystem. Winter won't stop the villains, and neither will hot spells or drought. They'll just hunker down and wait. Meet the pine processionary caterpillar a beast that devours pine forests with military precision. In the spring, the caterpillars begin their march, connected by silken threads that link them together. Each head touches the belly hairs of the animal in front of it, and once the army is underway, there's no stopping it. A female is always at the head of the procession. The pine processionary is a polymorphous insect. It goes from caterpillar to chrysalis to moth, which means there are three enemies, not just one. Each form eats pine. While the processionary is still a caterpillar, it builds nests in the trees. Four or five nests are all it takes to strip an adult pine tree from top to bottom in the space of one month. The tree is so weak that it dies in the end. When the eggs hatch, the young in the larval stages prefer to eat old leaves, two or three year old needles. The next larval stages are not as picky or perhaps more voracious. They feed on the needles of the current year that contains more resin. When all the foliage is consumed in this fashion, the levels of defoliation can reach as high as 100%. The ravenous invaders have venomous hairs, too, which can harm anything they touch. When the caterpillar feels threatened, it rolls into a ball and opens little pouches on its back that contain the stinging hairs. It shoots out the tiny hairs like harpoons, which break when they hit their target and release venom. Their barbed points are terrifying when seen through a microscope. The hairs will remain poisonous for over 50 years. Abandoned nests contain the deadly hairs, too. Throughout their growth during the winter months, they shed their larval skin several times. Each discarded skin contains millions of these hairs, which accumulate in the nest. A processionary nest is made up of two layers. The inner layer protects and insulates. The outer layer is more flexible. The ravenous beasts leave the nest at night to gorge themselves. To re-enter their fortress, the caterpillars push their way through the weave. Then the caterpillars sink into the ground. Each will wrap itself up in a nymph cocoon and become a chrysalis. If conditions to transform aren't favorable, the caterpillars can stay this way for months. Usually, after several weeks underground, they emerge as moths. Each moth only lives for one day and only to reproduce. The processionary colonizes new lands by air and females begin to search for the ideal pines in which to lay more eggs. They prefer pine tree tops at the forest's edge. Planting deciduous trees around pine forests 
may provide a barrier to the beasts. We discovered that installing a border of leafy trees in front of the pines seemed to limit the attacks. This is probably because to the processionary the outline of pine trees is a signal to lay its eggs. We pushed this idea further and studied the smells produced by the deciduous trees. We found out that these smells are repulsive to the adult pine processionary, so this also limits attack. But the caterpillars are tricky, so the research team is looking at other ways to counter the enemy. When female moths take flight in order to mate, they release pheromones that attract males. Each male dies within hours of mating. The females find pine needles to lay up to 200 eggs. Each cluster resembles a pine bud. Then the females die too. But the caterpillars also use pheromones to conquer new territories. For the caterpillar, these tracking pheromones are a matter of life or death. From the earliest stages of its development, it must scatter in order to feed itself. The tracking pheromones allow it to find its way back to the nest that protects it from the cold. Annie is developing a way of eliminating entire caterpillar colonies by using the tracking pheromones that caterpillars release as they move. Each individual caterpillar follows the scent of the one before it. It might be possible to influence the caterpillar's migration by leading them away from pine trees. We're looking to find out what makes up the pheromones so that we can artificially produce a synthetic variety. If dispersed on the wrong tracks, they wouldn't be able to find their way back to their nest. But the artificial pheromone is very difficult to synthesize and is still in the early stages of research. Meantime, the processionary caterpillar is marching on. Perhaps the pest's natural enemies are a solution. Like the hoopoe, a migratory bird that winters in Europe and eats caterpillars for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have all the right ingredients for the ideal hoopoe territory. There's the pine forest, which will provide foods because the processionaries spend all winter there. They will sink into the grassy zone at the end of the winter, and it will become a feeding ground for the hoopoe, raising its offspring. Hoopoes specialize in buried prey, unearthing the caterpillars with their beaks. The common hoopoes dig up the chrysalis, remove the cocoon, and feed their own young with budding caterpillars. Once the processionary completes its metamorphosis and becomes a moth, the female chooses a treetop to lay her eggs. Planting deciduous trees as barriers to the caterpillars also creates nesting spaces for other natural enemies of the caterpillars. Grasshoppers will eat every last processionary egg they find and great tits are willing to dispatch the caterpillars despite their venomous hairs. The tits have also learned how to pierce the nests. But despite progress from so many areas of research, the processionary caterpillar remains a formidable foe and continues to spread. Scientists are racing against time to stop its relentless expansion. There may even be evidence that the caterpillars are evolving into a new species, one that can adapt to a wider temperature range. This mutant variety develops during the summer, not the winter. Its nests don't need to withstand cold. So, they're just strung together with a few silk threads. During summertime, particularly in this area, the temperatures can be very high. There are some days where the temperatures are above 40 degrees. So, th this was our, one of our questions. Because we know from previous research that the limit of the survival will be about uh, 32 degrees. So, we thought, how can they survive if our temperatures are much higher than that? It appears that the processionary caterpillars are developing year-round cycles 
In Europe, the pine processionary is a native species, spreading as a result of climatic change. But in other parts of the world, there are several highly suited regions for it to settle in. If it were accidentally transported to these places, the processionary will be declared an invasive species. We can only hope that science is successful before these pine gluttons hitchhike to other continents.